Nearly 90% of people who lose weight will gain it back. And that's a startling statistic, especially as someone who has lost what I would consider a significant amount of weight for my body type. And we don't want to be one of those statistics. And so today I want to share with you some practical strategies about what we can do and understanding why is it so hard to maintain weight loss. So if you're ready, let's go. Hey, hey mamas, Alexandria here, 35 year old toddler mom, therapist, and gym rat. I lost nearly 40 pounds postpartum and it changed my life. So now my goal is to help other mamas and other women to be the best version of themselves and to reach their goals. So let's talk about this. Let's understand why is it so hard to maintain weight loss? So the first thing that we need to really understand and consider in all of this is the fact that our bodies are designed to both psychologically and physiologically survive. Like that's priority number one, right? When we think about our biological creation, we can understand that we're designed for survival. And that impacts us from a weight loss journey because we have physiological adaptations that will, not might, not maybe so, will occur because of this and our body's designed to survive. So what that might look like from a practical weight loss example is that because we lose weight, our basal metabolic rate or our metabolism will slow down as we lose the weight, which I know sucks, but that's how our bodies biologically function because it takes more energy to run a 300 pound body than it does to run a 150 pound body. But my point is, is that our basal metabolic rate is going to decrease. And that's one of the reasons that you will hear me and others included talk about the idea of lifting weights as a way to improve our basal metabolic rate. So in a longitudinal that was conducted for folks who kept the weight off for at least eight years, there was a suggestion that there are both some practical and psychological sort of qualities about these folks that would make them more likely to maintain their weight loss. And the other piece that's important for us to take into account is when we think about weight loss success and what are we really looking at measuring? Because I think unfortunately, and I went on a soapbox in a different video about this, so I won't do that today, I promise. But when we think about the idea of weight loss, I think a lot of people are very focused or concerned about, I wanna lose X number of pounds. And I think that can really trip us up, especially in a long term, because if that's the only goal that we're setting or we're considering success that we lost an amount of weight we wanted to lose, or if we're considering success, losing five, losing 10, losing 15, losing 20 pounds, like that's the only bar for success that can really tamper our expectations for things as well as psychologically trip us up when we're trying to maintain weight loss in the future. Because if our only goal is to quote, lose 20 pounds, then where is the goal that's gonna keep us and maintain us there? Hopefully that makes sense. So the first component, and this one is not surprising, I also discussed this in the video with um, my talking about the podcast with Mike, uh, Dr. Mike and Lane Norman, I'll link that for you if you're curious, but I discussed that in this video as well, and it was a, a similar study or maybe the same study, I'm not really sure, but they were talking about more exercise. And to me, this one is not particularly surprising, right? When we think about people who are better able to lose and maintain weight loss, we think about more active people, the people who live active lifestyles because you're burning more calories, right? You have a higher metabolism because you're keeping things moving. It makes perfect sense, right? And so the reason that I bring this up, well, for a lot of reasons, but one of the main reasons that I bring this up is because that's what makes it so important to really find movement and exercise that really meshes with you, that fits for you. So for me, it started out as dance, and then I learned to love and appreciate the sort of meditative quality that can come from weight training. And then of course, there's also the added benefits biologically and from a bodily standpoint from lifting weights besides just that improved, you know, muscle strength. And I just, I really have learned to love and enjoy the challenge that is lifting weights. But that may not be you and that's okay. Maybe for you, it's Pilates, maybe it's yoga, you know, maybe it's, it is dance like it was for me when I started. But whatever it is, it's important that you find joy or interest in whatever that activity or exercise is that you're doing. Because when you're not doing something you enjoy, 
you're not going to want to do it long term. And the reality of all of the weight loss and maintaining weight loss is that whatever your end goal is, you're going to have to be able to do those things for the long term, for the long haul. So in the exercise realm, it's going to mean that you're going to need to continue to incorporate some of these exercise movement components in. Granted, of course, everybody's going to have their favorites and there are certainly different strengths and weaknesses amongst the different kinds of exercises that you can do. So that may be something that you want to consider, but at the end of the day, it's got to be something that you enjoy doing because otherwise you're not going to want to do it long term. And so it makes sense that these folks are maintaining exercise long term. Listen, if you love this type of content, I would love if you would come and subscribe to the YouTube channel so I can come along and be your non judgy mom friend to come alongside you and to help you reach your weight loss goals. And I'd also love to say hello to you and answer any questions that you have in the comment section below to the best of my abilities and get to know you all because that's the only way that this community really works is if we get to know each other and communicate in the comment section. So two of the other ones, and these fell into what I would consider the like practical umbrella of things is an intake of vegetables that was higher than average, and also just having healthy food more readily available. And for me, the bottom line on this one really is simplicity and making it work for you. Increase vegetables. When you eat more vegetables, typically vegetables and things like that have a higher water concentration, so they do have the capacity to keep you full for a longer period of time. So that's probably part of the reason. And then okay, when we think about being a nutrient dense food versus a calorie dense food, like let's say a donut, right? Which doesn't have much in the way of healthy ingredients for us. It just packs that calorie punch as opposed to like, let's say, I don't know, like a banana, right? A banana is a nutrient dense food, even though it has a higher calorie. But when you think about things like grapes or broccoli or, you know, really name a vegetable with the exception of maybe like a potato, it's gonna have a high water content and so it can help keep you full for a longer period of time in a smaller quantity. Because like, there's only so much broccoli you can eat, right? Like think about if you're sitting down to eat some broccoli, at some point, you're just not gonna wanna eat broccoli anymore, right? You're just, your body's like, no, that's enough broccoli, right? Yes, yes, okay. And the other piece is the simplicity of having food available and around that's ready to consume and having healthy options, right? It's much more likely that you're gonna eat food that's easily at your disposal than you are food that you have to go to the store and get, right? And so it would make sense that the folks who are in this camp keep healthy foods around the house, right? Keep well-balanced foods around the house and in their line of sight and easily accessible to make and serve. And I think that's why a lot of times people will be successful with things like meal prep because it's much easier to make that decision when the food is already made, it's already prepared, than it is when we're not in a situation where we have food readily available to us. We gotta cook something or we gotta go to get the store to the, get the ingredients or whatever the case may be. And I think that's also why you see a lot of folks, myself included and my husband, where we tend to eat a lot of the same stuff just because it's easier. We already know what the calories are or the macronutrients are in all of the different like foods that we're eating. So we eat relatively the same amount of stuff and we just sort of like shake it up a little bit. And so we shake it up a little bit. And what that means for you is just the same thing, right? Is it may mean that you end up realizing that you're sort of like not eating the same food necessarily always, but just sort of like shaking things up in small ways because it's just easier to maintain long-term when you know this meal has this ingredients and this is my, my calorie budget, you know exactly how it fits into your calorie budget. So it just really simplifies things. And I think that's one of the key pieces, again, long-term, is just how do we simplify this and streamline it in a way that makes it something that we can do? Say with me, for a long time. And then the very last one, and this one is the psychological one that really was like, yeah, that makes a whole heck of a lot of sense. And that was that people in this camp believed they had the locus of control about their weight loss and about their like healthy living. So really all that means in layman's terms is that they believed they could do it. And that is a huge obstacle for a lot of folks. I think a lot of people who are on a weight loss journey who gain the weight back, it's because they don't believe that they could actually maintain it long term. If we set ourselves up psychologically that we are going to be successful, that we are going to do these things that we are, we're more willing to engage in the behaviors that are going to help us to be successful in the long term. And I think that's one of the challenges that we face, especially if you feel like you've had lower self-esteem because you've been self-conscious about your body in the body that you're 
living in and the weight that you're living in, I think we have a tendency as humans to get down on ourselves or feel shame or guilt about the way that our bodies look in the mirror. And it can be really difficult not to translate that into a negative self-image about ourselves, And that can translate into, I can't do this, so why bother? And I think the same thing goes for when you're thinking about maintaining weight, right? We get ourselves in a position where we've lost this weight, but then we don't believe that we can maintain it. And we must first, before we can do anything, we really truly do have to believe that we can do it or we won't do it. We will allow ourselves psychologically not to do it. And why I think that's so important is because this is really the truth for anything that we set ourselves up to do, right? If we believe that we can be successful at X, we're gonna take the steps to be successful at X, Y, and Z. We're gonna do the research we need to do. We're gonna take the steps that we need to do. And when we don't believe it, we're not gonna make the effort in the same way that we would if we believe that we could. Like let's say for example, that you know we want to be a CEO right? As somebody whose like end game is to be a CEO, they're going to take the steps that necessary. They're going to take the classes they need to take and learn the skills that they need to learn to become a CEO. Whereas somebody who's like, you know, I kind of like to be a CEO, but I don't know that I can do it. The likelihood that they're going to invest the same level of time and interest into all of those various skills to earn to become a CEO are less likely because they didn't psychologically believe that they could do it. And it functions the same way in weight loss, right? If we believe we can achieve it, we can. And if we don't, we won't. I know it's hard to hear, but if you're thinking that to yourself and you're like, well, I don't believe that I can, I want you to sit back and consider and maybe even take some notes, if you will. Why don't I believe I can do it? What about me makes it not possible for me to maintain this weight loss. And the other piece of this is understanding that this may take some time. It may be a learning curve and it may be some unlearning some behaviors or some thoughts about yourself that you've had for such a long time that they've become automatic thoughts to you. And if that's you, that's okay. It's okay to take time. It's okay to take space. It's okay to take time to go talk to a therapist if that feels most helpful to you. You know, I am a therapist, so of course I'm gonna encourage that. But this is also some self work that you can do with, you know, just people in your inner circle that you care about and they care about you. But it really examine, why don't I believe I can do this? What about me is somehow different from the people who do this? And why don't I believe I can do it? And give yourself the space to examine that and, and think deep, dig deep, because it really will surprise you the things that you come up with when you sit down and really examine this. The other thing that's really important too is when we think about weight loss, we make sure that we're setting goals that are achievable and that don't necessarily have a direct correlation with the number of pounds that we are trying to lose. For example, I must lose 20 pounds or I want to lose 20 pounds. There's nothing wrong with having some sort of weight sort of goal management in mind when you're thinking about your weight loss journey. But what you don't want to do is set the entire base of your weight loss up on this one specific number on the scale that you or Google or whomever has decided is the appropriate body weight for you because every body is going to look different we are all different sizes we're all different shapes we all have different body compositions and so you know when we think about how much do i weigh versus how much susie weighs there's not a base of comparison right because susie may be all muscle i may have a higher body fat percentage than she does or a lower one or whatever the case may be and so when we get in the headspace of like, well, I need to focus on losing 20 pounds as opposed to say a goal of, I wanna run a 5K, right? Or I wanna run a 10K or I want to be able to lift X number of pounds in weightlifting or whatever that you know target goal is for you. It's harder to focus on the journey if you're focusing on the number on the scale. And it's also much easier to psychologically get derailed when the scale inevitably does not move the way we think it should be moving because we have some extra water weight that we're carrying or we have made body recomposition and we've transitioned muscle to fat, fat words fat to muscle. All of those things matter. And so if you're focused on the number specifically, you're also going to focus on the scale and those types of things that may keep you from really being able to see the true mission of your goal, which my hope is that it's to be healthier, right? We're losing weight to be a healthier version of ourselves. And lastly, and I think this is one of the most important pieces because I've been talking for too long, what's new? Whatever you do, Don't play games with yourself and cut out things to take shortcuts to make it faster to lose the weight. Because once you, when you lose the weight, it's like the tortoise and the hare, right? The slow and steady wins the race. If you lose weight, 
like the tortoise, if you take your time and you lose weight and you make small change and small habits in the long run, you can maintain the weight more easily than if you're like the rabbit, right? Where you're just like shooting off and you cut out a bunch of foods and boom, you've lost 50 pounds. Well, now what? You didn't create any new habits that you can maintain in the long run. So I hope this video has been useful and helpful to you in some way. And if it was, YouTube should be recommending something else they think you'll love. And I sure hope you love it too. Until next time. Bye friends.